Ladies and gents, welcome back once again. All things covered. Yours truly, Bryant McFadden, B Mac, Patrick Peterson. Got another outstanding jam packed show for all you guys to enjoy, talk about. You know how we rock and roll every week. You know, we love bringing you guys quality sound, informative content. And once again, we got another great show, as I mentioned, but we got an outstanding guest, Pat P. Man, I'm fired up for this guest, man. How you feeling, Pat P? You fired up? Yes, sir. I'm fired up and ready to roll, baby. Let's get this thing started. And listen, listen, if you're a fan of college football, NFL football, just great breakdowns, you know who is exactly who is joining us right now, as you see there in your video, when you talk about working, putting forth some of the best information that one man can do, he is that guy, Brian Baldinger. Yeah, money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Money, 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 money. That funny, I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Riding around the city, plastic cup of C Rock. Bigger and I'm blacker. I am on that Chris Rock. NFL Network, Fox Sports, Comp Compass Media Network, football analyst, Odyssey, NFL Insider, Sky Sports, UK analyst, Baldi's breakdowns, hashtag breakdowns, one of the best, some of the best breakdowns you can see. Also, former Duke Blue Devil, 11 year NFL vet. Played for the Dallas Cowboys, the Colts, the Bills, and the Eagles. No other, as I already stated. Brian Baldinger joined us here. All things covered. Baldy, how you doing? How you feeling? I feel great, Brian. I feel great. Uh, I'm in a good spot, Patrick. Good to see you. Good to see both you guys. Uh, happy to be with you here today, man. Look, looking forward to talking some football. Um, one, one thing I, I know, Brian, is you can't get enough. Like, we're never, we never get to the saturation point with this game. Whenever right. the network executives think like we got too much, too many games, too much, we, we can't get enough because the fans can't get enough. No so way. like, I, like I'm, I'm just trying to feed the beast like like everybody else. Hey, Baldy, yeah. real quick before we get into the conversation, man, you remember uh, we had an opportunity to chat. I think it was two training camps ago. We were in Philly. Yep. And and and, and Pat P. Baldy's man, knowledge of the game is just so, so freaking Amazing. And we were talking about something that happened while I was playing with the Pittsburgh Steelers about an invert coverage that me and yeah. Troy did against Atlanta. And it was like, if you didn't know any better, Pat, you would have thought Baldy was in the huddle with us because he was <laughs> just breaking it down from top to bottom about exactly what happened on a game winning, potential game winning interception by Troy against Matt Ryan. And he was well, just what's funny about that, Brian, was as soon as you you told me about that coverage. I, yep. I when, when practice ended, I came back here to NFL Films and I looked up the play and I watched it, and I was like, "Dang! Like more more people should run this coverage because Matt yeah. Ryan, like Matt Ryan, did get fooled a lot in this business, but he got fooled um, because you'd set it up, you kind of laid the trap earlier in the day, and and then you came back to it in crunch time, and Troy made the pick and you know put the game on ice, but like it was just one of those things where I don't pretend to know." And near enough, but if I sit there, I talk to you, I talk to Patrick, everywhere I go, I'm just trying to learn something new, you mm -hmm. know, because I feel like that's the best way to like, just, just keep, keep that cup like flowing with knowledge and share it with the people, share it with the players, share it with the fans. And I figured like that, you can never go wrong doing that. No question. And, no and question. speaking of keeping the club flowing, I had opportunity to spend some time, me and B-Mac had some opportunity to spend some time. In uh, your home, uh, your hometown, uh, Pittsburgh, you yeah. know, uh, you obviously know Pittsburgh has made some recent news and back to back weeks with inquiring Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. How do you feel about the news with both of those guys now joining the roster? I, I don't I, I think they made the right decision, Patrick. Mm. I mean, first of all, like, you know, we, we work under a salary cap in this business. So you're getting Russell Wilson, whatever version of Russell Wilson you're getting. You're going to get a motivated, healthy version. And then you're going to get Justin Fields. You're getting both those players. And they may be the heir apparent. Maybe Justin is heir apparent, you know, down the road. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe at some point this season. But you're getting both players right now for under $5 million total dollars and a six-round pick. So, like, from a just a financial standpoint, you can't do any better. And, look, the fact is, you guys went 10-7 last year, Patrick. You played mm -hmm. three quarterbacks. And I'm not here to say anything bad about Kenny or Mitch or Mason. They threw a total of 13 touchdown passes. Like mm, that's right. almost hard to make the playoffs <laughs> if your quarterback is throwing 13 touchdown passes. Right. You play 17 games. It's 17 games. 
So, you know, Russell threw 26 last year. Justin Fields has run for 26 touchdowns, you know, in this business. So, like, I, 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 I'm I, a Justin Fields fan. I make no apologies about it. I think he's difficult to defend. I think he's improved. Everybody knows that in Chicago they fired coaches, offensive coordinators. Like, they haven't put a team around them the way other it. teams build their teams around franchise quarterbacks. It's yeah. not his fault, but he improved, I thought, every year. I think the Steelers – and look, you know, the owner came out in Pittsburgh. And he, he never mingles, but he did come out and say, look, it ain't good enough to be 10-7 anymore. We need to start winning playoff games. Well, I think it starts with your quarterback play. Um, and so that's – I think it's going to be improved. And wow. Wow. whatever wow. version of what we see, Patrick, it's going to be an improvement over what has been there the last two years. And why do you, why do you think Justin Fields' market wasn't what everybody believed it was going to be? Mm. I have no idea, Patrick. Like, mm -hmm. I looked around the league, and I said, okay, the New York Giants gave Drew Locke $5 million guaranteed mm -hmm. to go be, whether compete for a job or be a backup. He's played five games in three years. Like, I, I don't need to watch Drew Locke. I know what he is. Like, I take Justin Fields, if you're playing corner, Patrick, B Matt, if you're playing out there, you, you know Justin Fields can hurt you on any given play. I don't feel that way about Drew Locke. Yeah, like, right. I just look around the league, and I go – I don't know. Like, I just think, would you rather have Jimmy Garoppolo and all his injuries or you know, to back up Matt Stafford, you'd rather have Justin Fields? I could go around the league and I go, I take Justin Fields yep. over what they did with the Raiders over a lot of these teams. Mm -hmm. I don't know why the market just went soft. I heard yeah. it went soft at the combine when people started talking, but you know, it's just, but you know, it was it was a real carousel of backup quarterbacks going around the league. All these backups got signed. Some of them might be starters, mm -hmm. but I, I thought Justin Fields will will he'll have a chance to write his own script though, and maybe yeah. it's in Pittsburgh over a long, long time. Yeah. Oh, he's talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers. They also signed Patrick Queen, who I love. That was a big time need for the Pittsburgh yeah. Steelers. Deshaun Elliott also traded for Dante Jackson by getting rid of Deontay Johnson. Barring good health, what is the ceiling for the 2024 Pittsburgh Steelers? Well, you know, I'm a big um I'm a big fan of Patrick Queen. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's just it's just his speed. Like I always feel like if you're a middle linebacker is fast, it makes your whole defense look fast. Yeah. And they need playmakers at that position. Yeah. You know, and they've struggled to find him. I thought Landon Roberts played well last year. But they've struggled to find two off the ball inside linebackers that can play because you got to play in tandem. Like you're splitting coverages, you're splitting responsibilities, you're playing run fits, and you're spilling each other. Like you got to line up. And Patrick played like that with Roquan, and they were maybe as good a tandem, maybe San Francisco, you know, with Dre and Fred. But they were amongst the, the two or three best tandems in all of football. And mm -hmm. Patrick's a big part of it. Um, I think he's a better player if he doesn't have to wear the green dot call the defense, make all the checks. Landon could do that. So I, I think as, as long as he doesn't have that responsibility, I'm not saying he can't do it. Mm -hmm. I know he can, but it seems like he plays faster and he's like, he's, he, he's more, he's more productive when he doesn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, Deshaun yeah. Elliott, like everybody's playing three safeties. It's hard to keep him healthy. Deshaun Elliott from the day he came out of Texas, played with the Ravens. He's, he's been around the league, but he can flat out run. He can yeah. run and he can hit. Like he's he's a he's had some injuries, a lot of safeties do, but he's been a good player when he's been on the field. So what would you say the ceiling is for the Pittsburgh Steelers with the moves that we've seen so far? Now, granted, there's still a draft left to happen in April, and I want to ask you as well. You know, what positions should they target with the first two picks, first round, round one, and round two? But as we see the Steelers, how this roster is is constructed now, what's the ceiling for them? Well, I mean, everybody's chasing Baltimore. I mean, they mm -hmm. just are. I mean, Lamar's the MVP of the league. He's difficult to defend. Um, the off the defense was the number one defense in football. Now they lost their coordinator. They lost Patrick. They've lost players. So we'll see if they can still, you know, and who knows if they can, you know, sign some of the guys like they did last year that really helped them. Um, but, I, you know, I think that they're competing with Baltimore. Baltimore right now, Cleveland made the playoffs last year. They played five quarterbacks. Maybe they're better if, you know, if they if they can, you know, keep their quarterback healthy. But everybody's looking up at Baltimore right now. And mm -hmm. so they're very – they're a good organization. They do things the right way. They draft well. They develop. Um, so when you say the ceiling – and look, it's – it's 
that's Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh and Baltimore. It's, it's the best rivalry in all of football. Maybe it comes down to those two games against those two teams. But I, I think Pittsburgh's a playoff team. Yeah. I think they're going to draft a center in either the first or second round. They need a center. They they went heavy on trying to upgrade the offensive line last year. Isaac Sayamalo was my favorite free agent signing in the offseason last year. He played every snap and left guard. Uh, Broderick Jones is going to be a star in this league. He's only – I don't even know if he's 22 yet. Um, but he, he can flat out play. Darnell Washington is only going to get better. Like, they're you know – Omar and Andy Weidel, they've done a good job of yep. rebuilding this team. And so I'm looking, I'm looking forward to George Pickens going off this year and becoming a, a number one wide receiver. Maybe they draft the receiver in the first round. There's, I mean, I, I see six that could go in the first round right yeah. in front of me. So they're, they're going to have their pick at number 20 if they stay there. Mm. Wow. And well, speaking of first rounders, uh, NFL made some uh, 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 major headlines again this week with, Aaron Donald retiring. We all know that he is first ballot Hall of Famer, but where do you rank him as the NFL all-time great defensive players? Well, um, he's right back in Pittsburgh, right where he spent basically every day of the offseason. Mm -hmm. uh, probably won't do one media thing or anything like that. It's not Aaron. But I played with Reggie White, Patrick, and I thought he was the most dominant defensive player I saw, him and LT, uh, back in the day when I played. And I was a teammate of Reggie and played against him. Like I don't like he's he's in that cat, he's in that conversation of Reggie White, Lawrence Taylor, because he dominated the way only certain players can for a whole decade, not right. four years or five years. I mean, JJ Watt dominated his league for four years. Injuries, things happen. He did it for a decade. And he right. missed very few games, which is hard to do. And like yeah. I, I'll tell you a story, Pat. Like this year, um, the Eagles, I'm, I'm close to the Eagles. I'm, I'm here. I, I work out with a bunch of the guys. So I'm I'm tight with a lot of the players on the team. And they had just beaten Indianapolis in week four in overtime. Mm -hmm. And Aaron Donald just ruined the Colts offense. It, it just ruined it. Like, And so, anyways, it's a Wednesday. It's installation day. The Eagles, they're in their breakout sessions. I get guys from the offensive line that are texting me during their meeting going, did you watch what Aaron Donald did last week? <laughs> and I go, as a matter of fact, I did. And I go, like, you better do something about that. He's going to do the same thing to Jalen Hurts. So they, they came up with a game plan they'd never had before. Like, literally, we're, Jason Kelsey went anywhere Aaron Donald went. If he went on a stunt, he followed. Wow. If he went on a loop, he followed. If he was lining up in a five technique, he slid to him. And they basically shut Aaron Donald out that day. But they came up with a game plan just for Aaron Donald that they had never done before. Mm. And if I heard that once, I heard that 10 times in mm. his career. And you know that when you are putting all your energy in a game plan for one player, just so that he doesn't strip the quarterback, hurt the quarterback, knock somebody out, whatever it is, like that's that's a special type of player. Yeah. So where where would you rank? I agree. I think the top three the best defensive players when you talk about those guys is, you know, pass rushers, defenders. You know, you got LT, Reggie, and Aaron. And Bruce, and Bruce Smith. And Bruce, so you yes. Got, you got those three. If you, you had to I mean? rank, if you had to rank with your top guy at one, two, three, and four, how would you how would you put together that ranking? Because you well, saw basically, you, you, basically, you've seen all three of them in person. Now you played against the other three. I play, but... I play, I play, I play. So I mean, look at basically Reggie, Bruce, and LT were all edge guys. I mean, yeah. Reggie did come inside a little bit, but they were basically all edge guys. If you had to say, okay, interior defensive lineman, you know, there's Warren Sapp, there's John Randall, you know, mm. there's there's Randy White. I'd say he's better than all those players mm. because of the concentration of production over a 10-year period. I mean, he's basically Barry Sanders. Like, Barry dominated the league for a decade, walked out in the backyard, and never came back. They that's chased him for a long time trying to get him back. Like, yeah. that's Aaron. He'll never come back and play. He won't play for another organization. He won't play. Yeah. Like he's he's Barry Sanders of the interior defensive line. Yeah. Mm. For me, selfishly speaking, I want to see him play at least one more year because <laughs> what we saw from Sean McVay and his staff this past season, being able to get into the playoffs, number mm. one, that was super impressive. I felt yep. like this was Sean McVay's best coaching year outside of the year when they won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Because in the month of August in 2023, there's a lot of players we didn't know exactly anything about. 
but exactly. they became big time contributors. So when you factor in the success and coming back, and then also too having draft picks. Remember, this was this will be this is going to be the first time in a long time the Rams will have a first rounder. First round, yeah. 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 For, first time since Jared Goff was drafted. Yes, was and Jared Goff was drafted in what? Uh, 2016. 16. 2016. Wow. First time they've had it before. Think about that. So yeah. when you factor having a first rounder, you know some of the resources that we haven't seen in years past. With the draft, with the Rams, I felt like, oh, Aaron Donald could come back and give it one more go. You know, give it one more go. But as well, you it's said, interesting. Like, um, you know, they 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 struck on both third round picks last year. Yeah, I Kobe, love Turner. Kobe Turner. Turner. Kobe Turner to Wake Forest yeah. and Byron Young. Both yeah. those guys, they had 17 sacks between the two of them. But, you know, both those guys will tell you that Aaron Donald helped them develop. Yeah. Now, yeah. Raheem Morris did a great job you know, mm -hmm. of building that defense and, and working these guys. They didn't start right away. But he kind of built it up, and they moved Aaron around a lot. But Aaron brought his hand-to-hand um, -hand combat guy in, mm -hmm. this guy, Pooty Carson. Uh, he brought him, and he started working with Kobe and Byron, so their hands got a lot better. Um, and so just as, you know, like anybody will tell you that if you are in a walkthrough with Aaron Donald, you better tape up. Just <laughs> tape up, because there's only one. And he's going full speed in a walkthrough. At one so you, they, he, they, they learned his practice habits. They carried it over. It's a war out there, you know, in practice. Um, Aaron likes to start the fight, finish the fight, and then get on to the next play. Um, I think those guys learned a lot, but I think they could woo him and they could throw a boatload of money. Mm. Uh, Aaron Don will still always lift weights because he loves lifting weights. So he'll always yeah. stay strong. He'll but stay it won't surprise me to see him at 260 by this time next year. Wow. I can mm. see that. Rip City, though. He'll be, he'll be yeah. rocked up, but yeah, a little lighter, a little lighter. So far, you know, when you talk about free agency, it's been entertaining, by the way. It's been like the NFL has been, you know, just dominating with headlines. But, Baldy, when you look at the teams so far from what we've seen in free agency, uh, which team has had the best free agency period so far? And which team would you say they've had the worst free hmm. agency period so far? Well, I think they're the rivals. I mean, I think Philadelphia had the best. Okay, and, and and or I would say Houston had a very good free agency. Like they're yeah. they're building a beast in Houston, mm -hmm. but I'd say and Dallas had the worst. Yeah, and you know I mean Dallas won the division at twelve and five last year. The Eagles like fell apart and finished eleven and six. Um, and I think they needed to be aggressive because of the stink of the end of the season and mm -hmm. how it just all collapsed and mm -hmm. just the negativity around the team and a lot of things. But to go out and get Saquon, like Saquon didn't want to leave New York. He wanted to say, but they, you know, look, I mean, players are business people. Like the idea, like, I'm not here to trash Tiki, but like for anybody to say, like, you're not one of us, like you players got to make business decisions. Yeah, the Giants, um, Patrick, you, had to do it, Brian, you had to do it. Like everybody has to do it. And the Giants, but, like, all we wanted, if all he wanted was show me, not show me the money, but show me the the commitment. That, yeah. That's what the, the contract is. The commitment. The players just want to know. We want you here, not for a year. We want you here. So Saquon goes to Philly. He's never played behind an offensive line like they have in Philly. They've already right. got Jason Kelsey's replacement in place. They're going to draft an offensive lineman. Um, you know, to get Bryce Huff, who was as good of a player off the edge as it was, to get, uh, you know, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson back mm -hmm. to be that in-the-box safety that they really like to play. I mean, and I don't think they're done. You know, to, to bring back Brandon Graham for another year, I think it was a good move. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think they, and then Dallas, look, they, you know, they signed Eric Hendricks late and that was it. And they lost their starting center. They lost their starting left tackle. Lost they the lost their starting running running back. running back. They're going to lose Stephon Gilmore. I mean, you know, they lost four starters that basically played every snap for them last year. I agree. And also too, we look at some of the other teams in the division. You talked about the Eagles, but everyone else made moves to get better. So yeah. I agree with that. And one more question with regards to free agency. Which free agent move will we all be talking about the most come January 2025? I think um, Daniil Hunter to Houston. Uh, you played Daniil Hunter opposite Will Anderson. All right. And then you add and, Danico Autry inside. And Danico, Danico, yes. I That's mean, 11. Danico Autry awesome. has got 30 sacks the last three years in Tennessee as kind of a road, an inside outside player. Yeah. Like he's a good pat, really good pass rusher. But you put yeah. Will A and Daniel coming off his best season. You know him, Patrick. I mean, he's he's yeah. a warrior. He's a, he, he, he's this a was his best season. I thought Brian really did a good floor as that is, did a really good job of putting him in positions. But you know, his effort, 
Um, he was really active. He's really slippery. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can play him anywhere in the defensive front like they did last year. I, I think that move might turn out. Like, he was my number one free agent in this whole thing after Chris Jones got signed. Mm. And so I thought Houston getting him. Like Jonathan Greener, they lost to Minnesota. And I like what Greener did last year. Yeah. But Daniel's a better player. He's only 29 years old. He's a better like he's player. around forever. Right. I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, well, Bob, let's transition over to the draft. Who's your... Who's the best quarterbacks in this year's draft that's not named Caleb Williams if Caleb Williams is your number one quarterback? This might hurt you, Patrick. You're an LSU guy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, um, and I like Jaden Daniels a lot, but I like Michael Penix better. Mm -hmm. I like I like, my, I like Michael Penix Jr. Like Penix his, is your number two? He's my number two. And why? Why you like Michael better? Yeah, let's see this. Let's, couple let's things. Um, number one, he started in Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he wasn't highly recruited. He went to Indiana. He beat Michigan. He took mm -hmm. Ohio State to the brink with a lot, with nobody that has been in the NFL from the Indiana team. Like, he played great. Then he got hurt, got hurt a couple of years. He goes <clears throat> he goes to Washington. They're 4-12, and 12, Patrick. They're, nobody's talking about the Washington Huskies. Like, they're a dead program. And he right. goes with Kalen DeBoer, the new coach there. And, you know, like, Roma Dunze and – McMillan and Polk, all these guys were ready to leave. And he said, no, stay. Like, let's start working out. Let's stay. Like, they could have all transferred. Mm -hmm. And he got them all to stay in the tight end. He got them all to stay. And he won 24 games over the next, you know, two years and took them within 30 minutes of winning a national championship. That's number one. Number two, he started 27 straight games, never been hurt after the initial injuries at Indiana. I've – He's going to run pretty soon. He had a Jones fracture in his foot, so he didn't run for combine. But he's he's going to run soon. He's going to run the four fours. Mm. Like he's he's that I heard fast. The same thing as well. But what I, I like about him, honestly, the best thing I like about him, Patrick, is um, a he's got as good an arm as anybody in this draft, bar none. Uh, but he's always got his eyes down the field. He never yeah. drops his eyes. So he's always able to find that player on a scramble drill or extending a play or anything like that. That's. That's that's what I and I think he's smart as hell. I think he ran a pro style system at Washington. A lot of motion, a lot of movement, a lot of pre snap stuff. Like he's just he's just really on the stick about all that. Baldy, how big is how big is the gap of separation between Caleb Williams and Penix Jr. for you? I don't know. That's what I was going to ask. Well, I'm I'm a little biased. I I, I worked uh, Sean McVay and Kyle Shannon. They had this camp called Quarterback Collective and. I did a bunch of stuff for him when these kids were in high school. I remember Caleb when he was 17 years old, mm -hmm. high school in Baltimore uh, or in Maryland. And I got, I put him in a film room and I just said, okay, here's, you know, here's cover six, here's cover three, here's cover, here's quarters. How are you attacking? What, where do you go with the ball? And I'm showing him Josh Allen and, and I'm showing him, you know, Mahomes. And I'm showing him, like he knew, he knew the answer to everything. Like without being cocky, like he just knew coverage yeah. and how to beat it, how to attack it, you know? And, he was just – and then you watched him throw when he was 17. And I said if he went to the combine, he'd throw as good as anybody at the combine when he was 17. Like, I think he's really smart. I think he's really well coached. Um, and he's got a really good arm. And I don't want to compare him to Patrick, you know, to Mahomes. I don't. But at, at USC, if you didn't score 40 every week, you didn't win a game. Yeah, you didn't so stand a chance to win. The defense is going to stop. They were terrible. Anyway. Like, yeah. you watch him play defense. I don't know what, what they were doing. But they, like, honestly, like, he had to, they he had to, like, look for these home run balls. Yeah. He, he had to play the style that he played just as, like, even against, um, gosh, against Washington. Like, Washington. they put up 45 points and lost and to Washington. Wow. Yeah. Well, still standing in the draft, who's your, who's your top corner? We had Nate Wiggins on last week. Yeah, we had yeah. Nate Wiggins. And uh, Nate, Nate, uh, Nate is one of those uh, – Richard Sherman type body frame, but long, with a uh, long uh, lean, yeah, with the Witherspoon type speed. Yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be a toss up. Him and, I think him and Terry and Arnold, I think are going to kind of fight for the spot. I mean, Terry and Arnold at Alabama, you know, you watch any of his receivers at LSU, you watch him against Alabama, like, like it's all phases, Patrick. Like, he's got he's 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 every bit of six feet, you know, he's uh. Uh, you know, he's, he's 200 pounds. Like he's got the length that you're looking for, but you watch him in the run game. You watch him on all those bubble screens, just defeat blockers. 
like at the point he's physical. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, like he, I, I don't, I, I don't know how to really honestly at this point separate them. Cause I don't know. Um, you know, they all play some version of press and press man, mm -hmm. but they all look like they're bailing a lot. Um, you know, it's just question of your taste. I, I, I don't, I haven't sat in a room with them. Like, like you talked to, to Wiggins. I haven't talked to either one of them. Sometimes mm -hmm. you, you get a, a feeling about the player, mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when you sit and you talk to these guys. Yeah. But I think they're going to go one, two at corner right now, Arnold or Wiggins. Yeah. Well, you know, we have, as Pat mentioned, we had Wiggins on last week. He said he was pissed off that he ran a four, two, eight because he strained his hip. He didn't get a chance to open up and said that he was planning on running much faster than the 428 that he was clocked at the combine with the strain hip. Yeah. Well, um <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know, the speed is the speed. Um I watched, you know, Lad McConkey like turn Terry and Arnold around like he was, you know, like on he was out a route. stepchild. On an out you route. Know, I mean, just a double move on him and like Arnold was six yards away from when he caught the ball. Like these guys haven't seen the routers that they're going to see, you know, from, uh, you know, a, you know, Steph or, you know, like the guys in this league that are, are great route runners, like they're not really seeing that in college. And so I want to see what they're like when you go up against some of these players that, you know, that it's, you know, a Keenan Allen, those type of players, a Devontae mm -hmm. Adams, those guys that just have. Route runners. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's artful, you know, to watch Justin Jefferson run a route. I want to see him against Arnold Wiggins and see how they hold up. You know, when he's, you know, I mean, he's got a plan to get open. He's got a plan after the catch. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's every week now. And if you're in press man coverage out there, I, you know, you, if you have a technique flaw, it's going to show up pretty quickly. No question. And talking about Lat McConkey, man, this, this wide receiver class has potential to be one of the all time greats based on what we, what we look, what we see now when it comes to just pure talent. Your top wide receivers. Your top I mean, wide I, receivers. Look, I mean, like top, what, I, what I did today, mm -hmm. what I did today is I, I take, like I'm just looking at Marvin Harrison from 2022 with CJ right now. So mm -hmm. I'm just looking at Marvin. Like I, I feel like I know him. Like there's nobody with that kind of length and reach that he has. But I, I but I like Roma Dunze. I like Malik Neighbors. You know, I mean, it's, I don't know how they're going to separate, honestly. Um, and that's not to mention like the size of Keon Coleman. And what he brings to the table, I know he doesn't have the foot speed some of these guys have, but we all know that that doesn't necessarily matter. We saw Xavier, you know, worthy run. We mm -hmm. know what he ran, but then you could watch, you could see his speed on film. It's there, you know. And he's a good, he's a good, he's a good route runner for somebody that's that. Normally, those guys that run like that, they're kind of straight line speed. Yeah. But, I, but you know, he gets in and out of breaks, like this Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. Like oh, no, he can go. Yeah. I don't say too much positive, uh, positive things about a Gator. Me, with me being a no, but that Pearsall. I was, I was, I studied Xavier Leggett today. From South Carolina. Yeah. South Carolina. So he had one year of production. You know, we had a quarterback in Spencer Rattler through to him. But, you know, he does remind you a little bit of Debo. Now he's, he's, he's got Debo size. He's 6'2, he's 220. More lengthy. 6'1, 220. But, he, you know, he ran a 4'39. It's faster than Debo. Yeah. But, you know, he uses his body well. Like, um, like he, he bulls people over. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to compare anybody to Debo after what we've seen from him, but like, he's, he's got, like, he's, he's a legit player. Can't get, so my breakdown of the wide receivers, this is a very, very deep class. You can, you're going to find wide receiver value in the third round, in the fourth mm -hmm. round. But when you talk about the top two guys, now Rome should have his name in that conversation as well. Rome is one on one. Super, in. I think he's the most polished wide receiver of the bunch. Malik Neighbors, your LSU alum, Pat P. Mm -hmm. I know you haven't really studied the guys yet just like that, but Malik, and you, I know you know who Malik Neighbors is watching. Yeah, exactly. he, he might be Baldy, the smoothest route wide receiver in the draft. And the thing that I like about Malik Neighbors, similar to what we saw with Marvin Harrison Jr., is that since stepping foot on campus there in Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge, he, he balled out. Regardless of who the quarterback was, they the receiver. Him. Yeah, time. all time. That's the all time leading receiver at yeah. LSU, based on what we've seen 
in years past, recently, most recently from LSU, that tells you a lot. But I love his smoothness. And for me, Pat P, I don't know how it is for you. I didn't like guarding wide receivers who made it look so easy. Just yeah. smooth in their transition, smooth in their breaks. It just, it was a natural movement. It was like he was born to run routes and do so in a smooth way. Not to mention he has hands like Chris Carter and body control like Chris Carter. Now, Marvin Harrison might be the most talented one, but those three guys right there, I feel like it's a traffic jam. Now, you look at Rome. He, Rome ran 4-4 four, four at the combine. That's great. That's a great time for Rome in my He's opinion. He's a big guy too. He's big. Exactly. That's why I think that's a great time for him because he's a big body wide receiver. But when you factor in those three guys, I, I don't know how you're going to separate. When you turn the tape, all three of them have hot tape, but I think Malik has the hottest tape. And well, you did a breakdown of Malik against A and M. Yeah. Uh, the slot fade, which yeah. showcased the body control that I'm talking about. But that hitch route, I know we haven't seen Malik run yet, but that hitch route, and he broke and ran away from everybody, everyone in an Aggie yeah. uniform, showcased 4 3 speed. Yeah. Like, that, it, yeah. It, 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 it looked like that. I, I, I remember that play. Um, this Roma Dunze, he honestly, I love Garrett Wilson coming out of Ohio State because of his body control. He reminded me body control of a important. smaller Devontae Adams with his route running and body control with the ball in the air. And when I watch Rome, he looks like a bigger, stronger, faster Garrett Wilson. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's a bigger body. He's a Professional bigger body. guy, too. Yeah, yeah. So this is – I can't wait to see how it unfolds at the wide receiver position. One more I, question. But I believe this, though, Brian. I, I believe you this. I believe teams are going to trade up to get receivers. Like, we haven't oh, yeah. seen that in a while. But I believe, like, like the Jets – if the Jets want one of these guys, they're not going to stay at 10. They can't. Now, they just filled both tackle positions. They should still draft the tackle. But if they not want in the first round, though, I don't think they're going to take a tackle in the first round. No, I don't think so either. Not no. now. Not after mm -hmm. what they just signed. But I, but like if the Jets are sitting there at ten, like I don't believe they're going to sit there at ten and wait on Rome or Marvin. Like they might have to go because I think the quarterbacks going to go one, two, three. So mm -hmm. you know, and, and so then this question, okay, is you know at Arizona, are they going straight to Marvin at four? Like they could easily. Um, but if you want Marvin or Rome, you might have to get to number five to do it. You might have to. And if I'm Arizona, I entertain the thought of trading back. No doubt. No doubt. They need players. Yeah. So they like need players. the draft might start at four. If the quarterbacks go one, two, three, the way like it, maybe it happens, maybe I, mean, I, I, I can't predict that stuff. But like the draft might start at four and Arizona, who needs players everywhere, mm -hmm. um, they could say, OK, we'll, we'll trade with the Jets. We'll go back to 10. We'll still get, get an offense line and a receiver. We'll, we'll get just more players. Yeah. So I believe that if you That's want, if you want one of these cats, like you might have to, we might see multiple teams trade up. I like agree. the Giants are sitting there at six. They yeah. need a receiver in the worst way. So the Giants, if they want, if they have a particular guy, and you said it's a traffic jam, right? and yeah. I like that phrase, Brian. Yeah. But it, if it's a traffic jam. Maybe the Giants can't sit there at six and just take whatever's left. Maybe two of them are gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if two of them are gone, man, I know yeah. it's a deep, it's a deep class. But if you're the Giants, you got you as you stated, that's a die need when well, it comes Giants. to. I can I can see them, I can see the Giants possibly moving up because, like you said, they have who are their receivers? Uh, Slayton is still there. Slayton, Hodge, you know, Slayton's still there. Rondell, uh, Robinson Hodges. from Kentucky. Yeah, Wondell, Wondell's still there. But yeah. I don't think Paris Campbell and some of the guys they brought in, yeah. I don't think Waller's going to be there. Like, it's just, uh, you know, it was all one and done. Shep is done. Like, Shep's out of there. Yeah. So, I think yeah, there's going to be a receiver. They, they, they need a number one, Patrick. You know, yeah. they need somebody. Whoever's going to play quarterback, they got to start building this thing. No question. I, it, it's going to be entertaining. But, you know, a few pro, pro days are coming up. You know, so we get a chance to see some of these wide receivers who didn't really do a lot at the combine get a chance to put on. But – that Malik Neighbors. The more I watch Malik Neighbors, man, and watch his tape and dissect it, it's like, oh, I know people were saying he's been number two. He's been number two. But boy, he he kind of making that thing look real interesting when you talk about the best potential wide receiver in this draft because he has that smoothness. One more question before we transition to the superlative part of our show, Baldy. Who is a player in regards to the NFL draft, all the studying you've been doing watching tape, who is a player that you really, really like that no one is really talking about right now? Man, I just was studying this kid, Edron Cooper from Texas A&M. He's the an linebacker. off the ball inside linebacker. Mm -hmm. Like he ran four three eight, 
at 238 pounds, like he's, or 230 pounds, but it's not even his speed. It's just his suddenness. Like if you need a guy to spy Lamar on third downs, like this guy chased anybody. He chased Jaden Daniels down all day against LSU. You watch him against Alabama. He made every play against Alabama. Like it was like you draft him in the top 10 just off his Alabama team. But when I watch him, like, like he, he knows how to shuffle slide. And when he hits, like he just rocks people. Like he just has that snap to him. Like he's a hitter. Like he's a good tackler. He's a great blitzer. Um, like there's nothing he can't do. He's got to be in the right system where he really know how to use his talents. He can run with the backs and cover them out of the backfield. He can run with slots. They can do all that stuff, but you want him at the line of scrimmage where like he's just seems unblockable and his change of direction is just, and just his ability to hunt people up. Like that's the guy that to me looks like a top 20 pick. I don't hear a lot of people talking about. Him. Oh, when yeah, for sure. First rounder is about where he goes in the first round. When you look at NFL player comp, you know, who, when you watch his game, Body size, body, you know, size and measurables in his game. Who does he remind you of? Roquan. Oh, reminds me of Roquan. Like I don't think he's just a pure inside linebacker. And it, like Roquan's a natural leader, steps on the field, he's the leader. Yeah. Like, I don't know if he has that to him, like that dog of a leader, where everybody just follows him. I don't know that. But when I just watch a guy run and hit, and th- do everything the way Roquan does, like I can, I can see a will linebacker mm. type name your best will like Dre Greenlaw like name your best will linebacker in this league like he looks like that type of guy yeah mm. hey whoever drafts them uh they getting a, a, a for sure baller day one potentially day one starter as soon as he stepped foot uh on uh in the facility whatever organization drafts them hey baldy before we let you go we love the transition to the superlative part of our show right so we're gonna hit you with rapid fire questions all right all right uh, you can this pressure. yeah so i know you kind of talked about this but you didn't really go ahead and get you know specific about this player you know when you talk about your playing career who was the best defensive player you went against or you saw in person reggie reggie was the best i remember one day in practice, I, I always, when I got to Philly, I, I'd come from Dallas. I went full speed every practice. That's how we practice. And I remember one time, Reggie just pulled me aside. You know, he had that deep voice. And he said, look, look, Baldy. I know you got to practice the way you got to practice. But here's the rules. If my chin strap is buckled, come at me all you got. But if it's unbuckled, don't you dare hit me. We're going to fight. Like, it was just that, it was like that, he finished it right there. But Reggie just, you know, watching Reggie just hump people off the screen. And at home, um, man. You know, like, it didn't matter how big a dude was. Reggie yeah. just threw him. I remember one day, we had an electronic scale in Philadelphia. And, you, you know, we, we'd step on the scale, go in the showers, whatever. I remember one day, I was just curious, like, what Reggie weighed. He got on the scale, and the thing was climbing. Like, mm-hmm. the, the numbers were climbing. He was at 325 when he jumped off. Like, it was still going up. Like, he probably played. <laughs> Some at the end of the year, he's probably like 335 pounds. Wow. He's still running a 4'7. You know, wow. like we've never <laughs> seen nothing like it. Playing the end. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. Top five NFL coaches right now. Rank them, please. Ooh, okay. Well, Belichick is out, Pat. So that changes yeah. things. Yep. Yeah. I'd say McVay, number yeah, one. McVay one. I put McVay one. Okay. Like he's been to two Super Bowls, got a team to the playoffs that, you know, nobody thought his quarterback missed a bunch of games, got his team back to the playoffs. I'd say McVay won. I'd go, I'd say, well, and I'd say, I'd say Andy Reid won, McVay two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'd say Shanahan three. Mm-hmm. I'd say, so many, so many changes. I, I'll say, uh, I'll say, I'll say Harbaugh four. Mm-hmm. Don Harbaugh. Yep. Okay. And Ball then um, five, I mean, I guess you got to put Sean Payton in there, but, you know, he's got to kind of prove after his, you know, that he's going to be a lot better than what we saw last year before we just give it to him. Otherwise, maybe Dan Campbell, um, you know, maybe somebody like that. Okay. okay. So you got. I got Andy one, McVay. Andy one. Yep, two. Harbaugh. Gotcha. And Payton. And I feel okay. I, I, I don't want to disparage Mike Tomlin. I love Mike Tomlin personally. Yeah. Um, 
you know, but you know, people in Pittsburgh are like, it's time to win some playoff games. Yeah. Ain't yeah. enough just to, you know, like I know he knows how to motivate. I know he knows how to teach. I know he knows how to coach. But you know, it does come down to playoff wins in this business. Yeah. I got you. All right. Next question for you. Your favorite player to do a baldy breakdown on. Mm. I'd probably say either Micah or Max right now. Max either Crosby. Micah Parsons or Max Crosby. One of those two. I've mm. probably broken down every one of their games over the last three years. Just because of the effort, you know, okay. and the ability to, to to beat blocks, you know, like nobody's business or double teams or whatever's coming at them. Like both of them have that ability. Probably those two right now. Okay. That's dope. Playoff teams from both conferences that did not make the playoffs last year that would be playoffs this year yeah yeah that did not make the playoffs last year okay um i'll say i'll say the raiders i see the raiders antonio pierce i like what he's doing mm -hmm. i'll say the raiders will be one i'll say i'll say atlanta will be two i can see that mm -hmm. i'd say i'd say the raiders in atlanta would be the first like one from the afc one from the nfc right now okay, okay. Last question for you. A Super Bowl winner this year, not named Kansas City. Mm. Uh, I'll say – I mean, San Francisco is going to be in, in – in, they're going to be in the conversation. I'll say the 49ers are getting tired of losing these, <laughs> these Super Bowls to Kansas City. I'll, I'll take the 49ers right now. I got one for you. I want to throw this one out there because I think this is their year. If their co if their head coach can put down the video game controller, give me Detroit. Okay. All right. I mean, look, I, they, they knocked on the door. They took it to the break last year. They yeah. had their chances for sure. Dan, Dan Campbell was playing Madden, though. If he just accept the, just take the points, they, they probably make it to probably. the Super Bowl. Because I, I just like their style of play. You know, I'm old-fashioned when it comes to football. I love a team that doesn't mind getting dirty in the trenches on either side of the football field. Mm -hmm. And bringing in a guy like DJ Reader for their defense, yeah. that's, that, 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 that's that's really, really huge when you talk about just, sh you know, shoring up the interior side of things. They brought in some more cornerbacks because that was an issue, you know, mm -hmm. outside of Cam Sutton. You know, they had some issues there. So I think this is a team, when you look at their offense, Two running backs that can coexist. I love David mm -hmm. Montgomery, the physical nature. You yeah. got lightning with Jameer Gibbs. Jared mm -hmm. Goff has just been phenomenal. Yeah. He's been playing lights out. Ever, so. since he been, ever since he got there. Yeah, and they really believe in him. And Brad Holmes has done a phenomenal job. Just hey, They've drafted unbelievable. That's, yeah. They've had two great drafts in a row. Oh, that tight end is something special, man. Oh, Sam Laporta, Jack yeah. Campbell, Jameer Gibbs. You talking about all oh, those guys were – Contributors, <laughs> yeah, and, and rookies. I mean, there's some other guys too. You, if you look at their entire starting lineup, most of the guys are homegrown players drafted yep. Amon over Ra. the last yep. three years. Amon Ra, yeah, like yeah, the whole offensive line, whole offensive line's line is all drafted. Yeah, so I'll throw that. I'll throw the Lions name in that in that hat. But the only thing though, Brian, is yeah. you know if you if you get to a playoff spot like that next year, he's still going to go for it on fourth down. No, he's still man. going. Like he ain't going to change. Yeah. And, and, and be talking and, to take it points like it's one that's thing that I hate, Baldy. I don't know how you feel and Pat P. I don't know how you feel because most of the time, you know, you're playing a game, Pat P. So you hasn't you haven't really experienced watching games like I have being retired. I hate when you know announcers say, "Well, the analytics say you should go." Yeah, for it. yeah man. But, like, what, what, analytics is not out there right now. Yeah, and that's especially the word. In, in, in playoff football, Baldy, Pat P. You know this. Playoff football in the NFL, it always comes down to a four-quarter game. Three points feel like seven in playoff football. 100%. I agree. I agree. It's, 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 it's different. It's different. It's different. I, I, you know, like I – I don't even know, Patrick, if I respect analytics to the level that it's at in some places because I don't really understand it. Like, yeah. I, I've had coaches tell me that their decision to go for it on fourth downs was made on Wednesday. I'm like, well, on Wednesday, you knew that your left tackle was in and your quarterback was healthy and your defense was balling out. But you don't know that on Sunday right. until you get there. Like, <laughs> I just don't even understand some of the stuff that I, that people tell me. Yeah, me either. I, I, I hate that word. Oh, when analytics. You, analytics. Yeah. Analytics. Analytics said you should go for it when it's three three yards or less. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I take the well, points. you know, when you lose, when you lose that, it, it's just everybody knows as a player.
that's a motor that, that is a momentum shift. Oh no, right there. Oh no, momentum no, shift. The defense is running off the field. Francisco. They're on cloud nine. The offense is hanging their heads, walking off the field. Like those things are hard to overcome sometimes. And, th- and the thing about it too, Baldy, think about it. On every two point conversion or four two down uh, two yards or less, where's the football going? In the flats. Outside, yeah. Outside. <laughs> In the flats every yeah. single time. So, I mean, defenses now are understanding that better. That's why you're seeing more defenses are getting off the field on those fourth and three or uh, three or less. So yeah. why is analytics saying fourth and three or less is a go? Because <laughs> analytics ain't never caught a pass. Well, oh, so, but Patrick, you know, in analytics, like I'm not here to, to dish on people get jobs in analytics. I'm, I'm all for it. But yeah. like those people never played the game. Like right. I, I have friends, sons who are basic nerds and they're just looking at, you know, they're just looking at the a number of like watching 10,000 coin flips. Okay. You know, so they're just, they're just looking at the numbers mm-hmm. and they're not looking at the situation, the matchups, all that kind of stuff. Like I heard mm-hmm. Shanahan get ripped because he took the ball in overtime. Well, you know, I, 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 he was like, look, if, if both teams score to start the overtime, we get the third possession. I like my, so like he thought it through and they're like, no, no, analytics say like you shouldn't <laughs> take the ball in overtime. Matt, like, you know, whatever. So, Matt, like, we had a, we had a great discussion <laughs> about that right after the Super Bowl, the overtime right. scenario. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. I, I, this is how I look at what, what should be the right thing to do. Like the first, you know, you know, scenario that we talked about with Detroit and San Francisco, if you were to ask the defenders that play for Detroit, what should Ca- Coach Campbell do? I'm willing to bet all of those guys would say, Coach, take the points. Let's go up 17. Yeah. Let's go up 17. Up 17, halfway through the third quarter. People. Yeah. Right. That, not, I, I, like, I, I now I now, now you shrunk the game. Yeah. You shrunk the game. Now you're three, you're three possessions in the lead. No question. With a quarter and a half to go. And for us, Baldy, you know, when we have that type of momentum as defenders or offensive players, we can play the game differently now. You can play, mm-hmm. take a little more chances. Yes. Right? You yes. can break a little bit quicker. Yes. Like you're not going to just give up completions. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So yeah. that's how I look at when you talk about what you should do. If you ask the players, no, nah, coach, take the points and go up 17. In regards to the overtime scenario with Kansas City and San Francisco, I for one would be, if we win it, let's put the defense out first. So we can set the tone as right. a defense. You know what I mean, Pat P? What would you want? If you were in that scenario, you're in overtime, would you want to go out on the field first or would you want offense to go on the field first? It depends on, as San Francisco, he's an offensive court. He's an offensive play caller. Like I told you, if I feel like, and Andy came out and said that he probably would have kicked the ball for, uh, he would have put his defense out there first. No question, Andy would I good. don't necessarily believe that because I, think I feel like as offensive coordinators, if, if your offense is hot, you want to put them on the field right now, then put the pressure on the opposing team. Cause so say for instance, your team go out the you you give you give the um you give the opposing team the ball, they go out and score. Now the pressure's on you to go out and score. So but, I'd rather me go out there and set the table first and now put the pressure on the opposing team. Because as you know, in a two-minute warning, if you're down, who's the, who's the pressure on the offense or the defense? Yeah, what depends on what the ball is. No, it, it does, but all right, so we'll say. Like it was in overtime, they 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 kick they kick the field goal, they kick the ball off. Now they're at the twenty five yard line. Win a two minute drill. Who is the pressure on right now? The offense or the defense? In the offense, they got to score. My point exactly. So I don't. I think he's gonna take the ball every time. I can see it from either side, guys. I can see it from how we actually saw it because as a defender, now it's zero zero basically. If the defense is on the football field first, we know we got a window where we can. If we give up a touchdown, our offense still get a chance to get a touchdown. But boy, if we force them to kick a field goal or we force them to punt, our offense comes out with a whole new mindset on what they have to go get. But then, Matt, San Francisco offense just, I mean, defense just came off the field. Yeah, I know they were tired. And he said, and he said that, but he also stated too, remember, we're well, not Kyle Shanahan, but Baldy, you know, some of the players came out and said they didn't know the rules, the new rules. Yeah, but, but you know, like, you know, uh, like uh, Kyle Juszczyk came out. He said that. Yeah. Like, he didn't know the rule. But really, it doesn't even matter if the player knows the rule or not. Like, you're just trying to score a touchdown. Right. Like, and and stop the other team. Yeah. But, I mean, they, they would have scored. Iuk would have scored a touchdown. 
on that last third down if the right guard did the right blocking assignment. He blew the blew the blocking assignment. Chris Jones came at Brock Purdy and got it out of had threw the ball away and they had to kick the field goal. I mean, if they, if they actually blocked the play correctly, I mean, I oh. like smokes Legarius Sneed. That he was on the ground. Like he's that face was, playing. That, that was in regulation. The, the no, other no, play, that's in, that was the last play of the game. No doubt. Which one, which one led, which one no, led no, to overtime? Oh, McDuffie deflected the uh, deflected the pass that led to overtime. Regulation. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, you're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. They had a few messed up, uh messed up blocking assignments when Chris Jones came through Scott Free and they had touchdowns. Yeah. They had, oh, they had last play of the last play of the 49ers Super Bowl in offense. Chris Jones came free, unblocked. It, you know, it's it's, it's kind of inexcusable. But yeah. you know, Brock Purdy had no no he had no chance to do anything. He no was question. on so fast. Jones was in his face within two seconds. There's nothing he could have done, even though yeah. Ayuk was wide open, wide open. Yeah. Man, mm-hmm. Bought it, man. He's the we the we because me and Pat P we had this conversation about the overtime situation. Of course, the say they Detroit, but it's good hearing your thoughts, you know, being an offensive guy as well, and you know, not a firm believer in analytics. Cause I just hate when everybody no the analytics say you should man, listen, man. It's it's different when you out there. And for the people that I, I talk to all the time that are watching us that say there's no such thing as momentum. That's a lot. Man. That's a lot. No, that's momentum a lot. is a real yeah. thing. That's a real thing. It's a it's a real Man, thing. Man, when you're when you're in a visiting, if you're in if you're in one of these hornets nests on the road and that crowd's on top of you and you just you can't put a drive together. Don't tell me momentum doesn't exist, man. Right. You're like, Don't tell you're me fighting momentum uphill ain't real. the whole day. You're fighting uphill the whole I day. I not even man. help. you like, man, how many times else can we use, man? This thing feel like, but that snowball is coming hey. down to you. It's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> oh, man. I, you know, I remember I lost the NFC Championship game my rookie year in Washington. And, you know, they had this fight song back in Washington, Hail to the Redskins. I still have nightmares about that song in my head. We lost that day. And, well, it was my best chance to get to a Super Bowl. And I'm like, I still get haunted by that freaking song, you know. Like it still is in my head. Yeah, that momentum is a real thing, but you can't when it when it gets hold. At, at, you know, a prime example, ask the Detroit Lions when they did not go for it on the the fourth the, the two fourth down, you know, situations. They didn't watch that how that momentum shift in favor of so, uh, shift so friend. quickly. They couldn't get it back. Momentum yeah. is momentum is over. a real thing, man. You don't hey, see. I, it. I know we're I know we're dogging analytics, but the thing that the, the thing that always amazes me. Are these people in Vegas setting these lines on these games? Like that Super Bowl game, the over and under was 47 points. Yeah. And it was 25 22. Uh, it was right on the money, 47. Yeah. Like, how do they get that right? Yeah, that's crazy. Hey, they that's great. scary. They're great at what they do. Yeah. They're great at what they do. Yeah. <laughs> right there. And, and remember, the under would have hit in regulation, but overtime, the hey, over. And, and, and that block field goal. Oh, yeah, the block. That's the point. The extra, extra point. point. Yeah, yeah. So it was a lot. But I, I would never question the experts that set the line in any sports, especially football, because they 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 study. They're yeah. the best in the world when it comes to over unders, the lines, the spread, and things. I'm like glad that. I ain't a better. Be all right. That's all I know. I'm glad I'm not a better man. Yeah. I have no interest. You live longer. You live longer, man. Yeah, I live longer. Free, man. <laughs> you live free. But hey, uh, Baldy, man, it, yeah. it's a pleasure, man. Great, Thank you know, you. talking ball with you all the time, man. Brian, I appreciate Bowden, it, guys. Thanks man. for having me on, man. It was a lot of yes, fun. Yes, man. Eleven year NFL vet. In any upcoming Baldy breakdowns, we should be on the lookout for. What, what you you I mean, know honestly, right now as we as we talk to you. So what you got coming up? I mean, I like look not just because you're here, but you know this Trey Benson from Florida State. Oh, like like he's. You know, I, I mean, I know running backs went in free agency and stuff, but you know, he's two hundred and twenty-five pounds. He can he, he runs under four-four, and you just I watched every carry this year. I just mm-hmm. put it on, just went through it. Like he's impressive, man. They run power at Florida State and the counter the team in college football. Like everybody wants to run power. Like he's a good, like he knows how to be patient and then explode. Like he's an impressive player, man, and he catches the ball well too. Like I, oh, yeah. like I think he's like I, I. I'm gonna do a breakdown. I already pulled the plays, but I'm gonna do a couple more breakdowns on him tomorrow. Yeah, mm-hmm. Trey, Trey Benson. I love his patience, as you mentioned, and I love running backs that have a burst that can go. Yeah, you know what I mean, he has a burst. If you're not playing with the right gap integrity, he's gonna take it 60, 70 yards. Yeah, he's, 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 he's very yeah. smooth too. Yeah, he's very smooth, but he's big. He's a big back. He's got light feet. Like he changes direction. Like he's. He's a talented back, man. 
Yeah, and he's well put together. And the thing I like about Trey because of, you know, not really getting a lot of opportunities early on in his career. I mean, he's fresh. He's not yeah. coming into the league with nope. a lot of tread on his tires. So that, that's a plus. I, I see agree. him going, you know, early in the second round. Early. early. He might have an opportunity to be in that's one. That's kind of a sweet spot for those guys. Mm -hmm. That's a sweet spot. Derrick Henry went there. Nick Chubb went there. I think yeah. It's kind of a sweet spot for good running backs in this league. Yeah. If Dallas is smart, that's a guy they target because they haven't done anything free agency at the running back position. But, or, you know, early in the second round, you might have to move up early because I don't know where he might be in the middle to the late uh, second round. He might be already off the board. But, yeah, Trey Benson, man, the running backs have done fairly well in the Novell system. You know what I mean? He's another okay. yeah. prime example of that. But okay. smooth, big back, burst, fast. He got it. He got it. So we're going to be on the lookout. For that one, and, and if you guys haven't paid attention, man, hit Baldy up on social media, yeah. man. He has so many outstanding breakdowns for from current pros and prospects that we're going to be cheering and watching this upcoming Sunday as they get ready for the draft. 11-year NFL Brett, vet Brian Baldinger joining us here. All things covered. Patrick Peterson, Brian McFadden, Baldy, once again, we appreciate you, man. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate you, Baldy. All right, Patrick. Thank you, man. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate Thank you guys sir. having me, man. Good luck on your podcast, man. Appreciate it. Anytime. Bring me on anytime you like, man. Be happy yes, to sir. Enjoy. No you question. got it, guys. Yes, sir. Be good, man. Yeah, money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Riding around the city, plastic cup of C Rock. Bigger and I'm blacker. I am on that Chris Rock.